Hey, what up everybody? It's your boy Darnell and I want to welcome you back to another episode here on AZITV. Man, we got two special guests in the building from Good News Outreach Ministry International. We got Apostle Gary T.B. Baskins and we have from Angels of Jerusalem, uh, Apostle Harry King. What's up, fellas? How y'all feeling? I'm doing pretty good myself. It's a blessed okay. day. I love Glad it. Glad to be here. I love like it. The Arizona and Vaughn. <laughs> Amen. I, I love it. I love it. So, man, before we jump into, you know, anything else, man, kind of tell the people where you guys came from, how'd you guys get here, kind of what your backgrounds are. Hey, man, I'm, I'm Apostle Gregory T.B. Baskin of Good News Outreach Ministries International. Um, I was, um, I'm born and raised in Mobile, Alabama. And um, the Lord has had me all over the place. Um, I've recently came from uh, Virginia, and um, the Lord sent me to Arizona. So I've been here in Buckeye, Arizona, since 2020, May of 2020. And uh, my my thing is to reach as many for Jesus in this uh, region, in this um, the state of Arizona. And the message was to pray for an open heaven over Arizona and um, that's what the Lord gave me and also he gave me Maricopa County to pray for Maricopa County. Okay, I love that man. That's a amen. powerful message, a powerful purpose. What about you brother? Amen, amen. Uh, I'm from uh, Georgia, Atlanta area. I uh, just wanted to say uh, I've been here since 03. I came out here in 1985 when I went through my uh, Second divorce, or should I say my first divorce? But I said, God, I need to come out here to visit one day. And I came out here in 1985, and I said I liked it. I said, God, I'd like to live out here one day. And in 2003, God had made it happen. I was sitting on a mission. I heard a voice from God. He didn't speak to me until I was flying out here. My son ended up going to college out here. And I was in the air when God spoke. You will not be going back to Georgia to live. I'm assuming I was halfway between Georgia and Arizona in the plane. Mm. And I didn't know where I was going. I hung out with my son with a couple of weeks up in uh, Flagstaff, NAU. And uh, I told my son, after two weeks, I said, I don't know what's going on in, Arrows, in Phoenix, but son, I got to go to Phoenix. I'm just telling you, you're my only son. But long story short, I got my ministry uh, started, Angels of Jerusalem here, and I've been here ever since. And uh, I'm just excited about what God is doing. My whole thing is about unity in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, Angels of Jerusalem is, is basic. A friend of mine told me, he said, Apostle King, I want you to start a Jerusalem council mm. coming from Acts chapter 15, 1 through 32. And I love teamwork and winning. I'm a former football coach and basketball coach. I won three state championships in Georgia as an assistant coach, man, that's coaching the running backs or defense or whatever you need me to do mm -hmm. to get the players ready. Uh, you know, just like having two head coaches after 15 years. But anyway, uh, he showed me how to get men to come to him in football first using the basics. But he really blew me away when he gave it to me in basketball about the parable. So my main thing is pushing five-fold ministries. I'm believing God for building myself. I know a lot of, when I used to walk the halls in school, I was looking for point guards, shooting guards, power mm -hmm. forward, centers, you know. I'm looking for guys. What good is a coach ain't got no players to coach? Mm -hmm. So that's what I used to do. So now since I've been in the ministry and God called me to be an apostle in 1993 when he took me out of coaching, I didn't know what was going on. I was upset with God. And he put me in this thing called church. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it at the time, but I love it now. And he gave me an acronym what church stands for. Mm -hmm. Christians, humbly united, reaching children, honestly. Mm -hmm. So I said, God, oh, you got me hooked now, God. And he showed me, he gave me the basic principles with football, how we won in football. Because God would chase me down. I was clubbing in Atlanta. Every weekend, even though I was teaching and coaching, but every night I'm out there clubbing and partying. And all the clubs start shutting down to the script joints. And I don't like going to no script joints. Mm. So I said to myself then, I said, God, you must be calling me out of these streets. And sure enough, he was. I said, I'm going to find me a church and get in it. And I did that. But anyway, he been working in my life ever since. And I'm just excited about where I am right now. But the principle he gave me that we need to put into practice now came from football. I said, God, we, I said, God, after two weeks of running from it, he was trying to get me to do things. I said, God, just leave me alone. I like going to Bible study. I like singing in the choir. I like going to church. You know, three services, Sundays, I'll be at all three of them. Mm. Loving it. And then he started telling me to do stuff. I said, God, 
Leave me alone. <laughs> if you're trying to get me to do, go get one of your ministers to do it. Not realizing I've been called into the ministry myself. So I said, God, if you can show me how to get men to come to you the way they do sports, I said, God, I'll do anything you want me to do. Hmm. He said, you can. I said, why? He said, yeah, you can. So I said, we won in football, running, blocking, tackling, passing, field goals. I'm going to just stop there with those five. The R in run stands for repeat. Hmm. I said, I got the running down. What about the blocking? He gave me four beats. He said, you got to believe in God. You got to believe in Jesus. You got to get baptized in water. And you got to get baptized in the spirit. I said, God, I got the running and the blocking down. What about the tackling? Oh, the T for tackle stands for trust. Trust in God. Mm -hmm. And I kept it going. I said, what about the passing game? He gave me four Ps at the time. Now I got five Ps. You got to pray. You got to praise. You got to preach. You got to prophesy. And you got to pay your tithes and offerings. Mm -hmm. I said, I got all that down, Lord God. What about the field goals? What the F stand for? He said, without faith. Mm. It's impossible to please me. I said, God, now when I coach football and basketball, I like to be on the offense. How can I be offensive in this game? He said, it start with an O. Be obedient to what the word says. Mm. And then he took it on from there and showed me about the fivefold ministry. Your point guards or your apostles. So I hate the way they were doing church. And I'm looking at myself, God, I see why you put me this thing down. Because I'm pushing toward perfection. The last two state championships in football, one at Clark Central, and asking George and wanted done with it half when I coached Ryan Seacrest. Mm. I told him, young boys, I had a state championship ring. I said, I want another one of these when I was at done with it. They said, Coach, we're going to get you one. Each one of those freshman classes told me that they were going to win the state their senior year, and they did it. And both of them was 15 and 0, and that's when God snapped me out. That's my equivalent to David killing his lion in his bath. Two state championships. God said, You're doing that pretty good. I'm going to put you in my church. I, I, I can use you there. Mm. So that's where we are today. And uh, when he gave me that, and he gave it about the five-fold ministry, about the different positions, I said, I'm sold out. So I'm looking for a building today that can house a gymnasium. We're going to start five-fold ministry churches. And uh, we believe in God to train up our young men to understand five-fold ministries, teaching parables related to basketball. So I'm looking for a gymnasium where I can go back into coaching basketball. Because the point guards are our apostles. The shooting guards are your prophets. And the small fathers are your evangelists. Your pastors are your sinners. And your power fathers are your teachers. But all fives will be working together for the perfecting of the saints and for the wake of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Mm, you done preached the whole sermon right here. I mean, I don't need to go to church Sunday, do I? <laughs> I love it, man. No, I love it, man. That's humbling. That's humbling, man. Because it's, it's encouraging to me. Like I was telling you guys a little bit off camera, you know, this season has been kind of discouraging a little bit when it comes to, you know, youth and college ministry and, and drawing these kids back in. But God really spoke to me. So, I mean, in this time, you know, what are you guys doing with your ministries now that keeps you, you know, motivated to keep going? Well, mine's is uh, I get up every morning, usually around four o'clock in the morning. And um, I start praying, prayer, and um, um, and I usually would go up to Prayer Mountain, mm -hmm. which is Skyline Park. But the Lord told me to rename it and to claim it mm -hmm. as Prayer Mountain. I love it. And so I go there and I'll pray, and I generally stop around nine o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, during that time, if I pray for a certain amount of time, then I will be listening. Mm -hmm. I have my notepad out, ready to write instructions for that day, uh, directions that God would give me. Um, when he told me to go back to the mountain, he told me three things. He says, he said, get back on track. Mm -hmm. um, he said to um, uh, to get back on track and to 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 listen for his voice and to stay, for me to stay focused on him. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's what I had to do. And so I've been doing that. And then two weeks after he shared that to me, then he said, um, I want you to pray for an open heaven over the state of Arizona. Wow. What does that mean, open heaven? An open heaven means um, uh, Jacob, remember, he went to sleep, and as he went to sleep, he saw this ladder in a dream, mm -hmm. and there was angels ascending and descending, and God want to have a open heaven where that His presence can download, mm -hmm. and we can receive. So, so um, uh, right, you know, like right now, you got a lot of things that's kind of hindering, and and you trying to you trying to pull it back, you know, so that there could be a wide open. Mm -hmm. So God can just download His presence and um, and to, and, I, and to pray 
you know, for revival. Mm -hmm. I came from um, uh, a church of his presence mm -hmm. in Mobile, Alabama, and part of Daphne, Alabama. They, they had a revival that started back in Father's Day in 1995. And I was in San Francisco, and I saw how the power of God had, there was an open heaven over Pensacola, mm -hmm. Florida. And, um, and I was in San Francisco looking at it, evangelizing, and I was there in San Francisco watching it on TV, and I could feel the power of God so strong, like I was actually there. And uh, people was just by the droves for about a mile down the road or so, and, and, and wide, mm. and, and they was camping out from 3 o'clock in the morning mm. and church didn't open until 7 o'clock that night. And they would wow. do this, and they did this every day, and this was happening for five years straight. Wow. The presence of God. And then, and then, in, and then in 2010, I believe it was, there was a second wave. And this time, uh, it lasted three and a half years. Mm -hmm. And there was a lady there. Uh, somebody called me on the phone from Chicago and says, Brother Greg, y'all went to the revival in Mobile. You heard about it. I'm like, what are you talking about? She said, oh, Brother Greg, you, you got to look it up. You got to look it up. And, and I went on the Internet, the Bay Revival, Bay of the Holy Spirit Revival. Mm -hmm. I looked it up. And there was a lady in a wheelchair. And they, you know, they had been praying for her and... Uh, they talked about how the lady got healed, got up out that wheelchair. And I went back again, and I looked again. It says, Delia Knox. I said, that's Bishop Knox's wife. Mm. I, said, I said, we know them, you know, because we, we did some school stuff together. Mm -hmm. And I went there and played it, and I, I watched it, and I watched how they was praying for her, and she said, you know, she thought, well, I'm not going to get healed. This is going to be another one of them things where they grease you down and slap you around. And, but, but, but then she said after they prayed, she felt something different tingling in her feet. Her spine was severed. You don't walk from that. Mm -mm. And she got there, and all of a sudden the evangelist was praying for her. And, and all of a sudden, and, uh, my pastor, Pastor John, they got to praying for her. And then all of a sudden, she stood up. Mm. And when she stood up, they says, oh, my. And she was like, man, I got a little strength here. So they said, let's walk. And she started walking, but she was walking like this, mm -hmm. like this. Make a long story short, she was walking in a set of stilettos, and she was praising God. She said, listen, she said, I was a praiser in the wheelchair. Mm. I, I just didn't start praising him after he healed me. <laughs> I was praising him before he healed me. Come on. A lot of times people want to want to praise God for things, you know, after it doesn't happen. But on. you need to praise him while you're going through it. Come mm -hmm. on now. You know, when it seemed like there's a way out of no way and that your back's against a wall and it's like seemed to be over. And then all of a sudden, God will show up. And that's what it. happened. But an open heaven is allowing the presence of God to come into your you're, you're wherever you're at and let it begin to saturate you and Arizona is dry in the natural yes but now we're gonna be praying that God will saturate this place yes with his presence yes. and go through every house yes. all throughout the street all over the place that's what we're looking for hmm. well we're gonna pray that before we get off this interview mm-hmm Amen. Amen. I love it. I love power. it. Man. Power. I love it. So what brought you guys uh, to the informant today? Well, to tell you the truth, I've been knowing Clover and his wife a while since I pretty much been here. Mm -hmm. I met him at the Mount of the King, the march over there at the library. Yeah. He said, Officer King, when are you going to come by and do an interview? I said, okay. I've been thinking about it on and off as it is. So when he mentioned it, I said, okay. And lately, God said, yeah, you need to go do the interview. So uh, I know quite a few people who have a situation of this nature to sit me up to do interviews. So mm -hmm. I'm not that quick to run to get mm -hmm. involved in them. But anyway, God said it was today. Mm -hmm. I had told my friend about it. He was talking about the good news. Good news to you. Yes. Program. And I told him, and that's when I told him about Arizona Heaven black newspaper, mm. you know, Arizona Informer. He said, really? I, know that. I said, I know you didn't. I said, we're going to go by that. We're going to get together. <laughs> we'll 
But I didn't tell them Wingos, I didn't know him myself. Yeah. But anyway, I have some friends in Maricopa who have their house set up, like TBN or whatever, they mm -hmm. record on, but she was busy. We went down there and visit. So on the way back, we didn't know where we were going. I said, oh, I know where we were going. The Holy Ghost said, you know where you're going. I said, oh yeah, we're going to the Arizona Infirmary. I said, it ain't too far from the street. We're here, right by the team. We'll be getting off in a minute. We'll be right there. Mm -hmm. So that's why this came out today. I love it's it. It's all being led by God. Yeah. And, and it, it, it was spirit led. Mm -hmm. And I, I knew that our, I would say, our adventure for today was not over. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, something's, I, I couldn't put my <laughs> hand on it. And then when, when he said that, then as the more I, we got there, then when I got here, I was like, okay, I don't know what to expect. And then, you know, um, the sister came out and greeted us and what was back here. And I began to share with her some stuff um, uh, because I saw under the TV it says good news and I pointed that out to them. And I said, okay, we're in the right place. I said, now, I said, good news to you. Good news to you was a, um, uh, uh, it started out as a, um, outreach to reach out to the young people in San Francisco mm -hmm. and they was mostly young kids that was in um, in Hunters Point you know the, the hood part the gang bangers mm -hmm. and uh, God gave me a way to reach them and so that was through uh, using the camera and uh, getting somebody with some good and positive stuff to say to encourage them and it ended up from there to um, I started doing it went into like a little uh, talk show okay. and the talk show was but um, well, that's what it was about so I found people that was uh, very well known people that was not known somebody in the neighborhood that has done something that was very successful at doing it or they had something that can really help the, uh, be a positive influence mm -hmm. and so that's how I met um, uh, I met uh, Muhammad Ali first and then I met uh, spent six years off and on filming doing stuff and people interviewing us and and stuff so got to be good friends and then i met george foreman mm -hmm. and um and and i told him i said champ i said i need to get an interview and he was like oh man i, I said you mean tell me you gonna let muhammad ali outdo you he said, what? <laughs> he said you, you you talk to ali i said yeah man i said in fact i was his bodyguard <laughs> <laughs> he said, so, he said, I tell you what, Greg, he said, if you meet me in the morning, we can go work out in the gym and we'll spar a little bit. You can get it on camera and stuff. And I said, okay. And I got there like five minutes too late, man. And so I never got the opportunity to spar with him. Mm -hmm. But I did get a chance to interview him for two days. Mm -hmm. And I stayed with him, um, stayed in San Jose, interviewed him. And uh, I was the first to get his testimony of... Um, that what God spoke to him mm -hmm. and told him he was going to be heavyweight champ again. Mm. And he has a gym, like what you were talking about. He has a gym in Houston, Texas, and um, and he helped a lot of pregnant teenage women mm. and um, and helped them, you know, go through the process and, 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 and all of that and have their children. And then those that wanted to go to college, he helped them go to college. Mm. And he said, God, I'm about to run out of money. What am I going to do? <laughs> and he says, you still George Foreman. <laughs> and he said, okay. He said, you can go back and fight. <laughs> and he said, what? He said, you can go back in the ring. <laughs> then he said, not only that, but you're going to win the title again. Wow. And I was the first per ESPN. To, nobody had this interview but me. He mm -hmm. never told that to nobody. And I was like, oh, man. I said, I said George told me. And so when he got um, got up there and um, and he fought Michael Moore mm -hmm. and knocked him out. Mm -hmm. Everybody was laughing, making fun of him, mm -hmm. but he knocked him out. But good news to you was stuff like elements like that was brought into that. Mm -hmm. And and then when I interviewed his fight with Evander Holyfield, um, um, all the other newscasters was there, and I was like trying to. They man, give me a little space here. And, all, you know? <laughs> and they was like looking at the dude says, Well, who who are you? Mm -hmm. I said, um, I'm with I said, I said, I said God, what am I saying? God said, tell him <laughs> you with good news to you. And I said, Oh, I'm with good news to you. And he said, Oh yeah, I heard of you got hey man, y'all move out the way, let them in, let them in. <laughs> I'm looking like Wow. 
And so that's how we got on the on the map there and got to meet all these people. The San Francisco 49ers team of the 80s, team of the 90s. I interviewed all of them except for Joe Montana, Guy, uh, Guy McIntyre. No, Guy McIntyre, Guy. But, um, but Jerry Rice and yeah, uh, see, that's my, those guys. I started off as a fan for the 49ers. So yep. Jerry Rice, Steve Young, see, uh, Terrell young. Owens. Mm -hmm. You know what Big I'm saying? No, that, that was my squad, man. And then Corey and everybody know... Uh, uh, not, uh, Steve Young kept getting him down with concussions, so yep. he yep. was like, his wife told him to retire, so he was yeah, like, yeah, I gotta go. Yeah, yeah, to stop it. That, that was the thing, but that was the, I was the only one to walk through their whole camp with my camera and and everything. Went went in there and you know I put my foot up on Joe Montana's desk and kicked back and said, oh man, so it took some pictures and he stuff. Did. But the thing is, is that we we went on and um, but God did all of those things. I prayed for every player, every one of them. And they was like, man, hey, hey, can you pray for me? You know, it's my birthday. And they was having a big bash back there. So I celebrated with them and prayed with them. But that's what God is is, is doing now is that uh, he's, he's, he's wanting us to pray. Mm -hmm. And he's looking for men and women that will pray consistently. And that would be... Uh, uh, um, with, without ceasing. Prayer yeah. of a righteous man, of a righteous woman, that type of prayer. So he's looking for those type of people, and that's what I'm looking for. And um, and all of this that's being said, it all ties in to that, and that's what we're trying to do. Okay. Amen. Amen. I just want to say something briefly about Guy McIntyre. Mm -hmm. I had met one of my friends who grew up with my cousins. He was living out here at Luke Air Force Base. He was in the Air Force, and mm -hmm. I told him I was going to come out here to visit him. And I was getting ready to fly out. I had a round trip out here and I was going to fly back. Stay out for about two weeks. And I ran to the guy McIntyre, whom I had pledged at the time I pledged capital. He was about 50 men at the University of Georgia online. And Guy McIntyre was one of those gentlemen. Anyway, I met him at the Kroger grocery store. He said, Man, I know you had got drafted by the Fort. And I said, When are you flying out here? He said, I'm flying out here on such and such a day. I mean, no, he was driving out because he had a brand new Mercedes Benz. Mm -hmm. So I was going to been flying out the same day he was driving out. I said, Check this out. Me being big brother, you know, you just coming into the cap new. I say, uh, we rolling out of here together. You gonna save me some money. I'm gonna cash in my round trip. I'm gonna just have a, a one way coming back. Mm -hmm. We rolling out together at the same time. We doing the driving, and we drove out here together in 1985. Mm -hmm. And that was a blessed time, man. We got wow. back in time. I haven't seen him since though. Wow. And he told me when I met him, yep. and the way that I met him was something else. I ran across this list. He said, do you know the 12 different types of apostles? And I didn't know them. But anyway, uh, connecting apostle, uh, truth apostle, miracle and worship apostle, uh, military apostle, prophetic apostle. And the last one was an intercessory apostle. Well, I didn't pray for the rest of them. But when I got to that last one, he said, intercessory apostle. Mm -hmm. I said, God, I need an intercessory apostle. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, I ran into Apostle Gregory Baskin. Mm -hmm. So that's how I ended up there. But the thing that keeps me moving forward I'm all about unity. Mm -hmm. And when God gave me the NBA, the National Believer Association, Mark 16, 17, it blew me away. So I've been strategizing for the long I'm a strategist. It's like playing checkers or playing chess. Mm -hmm. I'm good at that. Mm -hmm. On the football field, up in the press box, you line up in a certain defense. I know what my offense can do. Oh, if you're going to line up in that defense against this offense, I got to play for you. Mm. I got somebody going to take it to the house on you. <laughs> Run this play like this here, head coach. I'll tell the coach what played. I, I didn't get in his head all the time, but he mainly called the plays. But me and him was like this here. Mm -hmm. So anytime I seen something, I'm mainly coaching the running backs. He running. And uh, that's how I got started. But when I seen this thing about God been dealing with me about regions, so I ran across this paper about, I didn't know it was 10 regions that make up the state of Arizona. But my main verse for Angels of Jerusalem is Zechariah chapter 8. Verses 1 through 23. And verse 23 spoke about these 10 men from different nations. And when I read about the 10 regions that make up the United States, I said, God, I need 10 apostles to reign over these different regions that we can become on one accord and be like the ants and spread out preaching the gospel to each region. And we're in the, they call it the Phoenix region. Phoenix region is number nine. Mm -hmm. And that makes up of Arizona, California, Hawaii, and Nevada, mm -hmm. and six other islands.
consistent in that. I say, Lord, this thing is awesome. So I've been, been putting pieces together for a long time. And like a big puzzle coming together, I said, God, I'm getting excited that this ain't giving you to take place. <laughs> so I'm believing God for a, a commissioner to vote, to reign and rule over the National Believer Association. Hmm. Where we all going to be on one accord, just like the NBA. I'm believing God for apostles, high priests, chief priests to rise up to oversee five full ministry churches. I think about Paul was going to the high priest to get orders mm -hmm. to go beat down Christians. So we need some high priests who are lining up with God. Go make sure the church is being ran as a five-fold team. Why? For the perfecting of the saints. Yes. So that's the thing that got me excited. And everywhere I look, there's another organization doing something similar. My main thing is love and peace movement. I did two love and peace marches. We met down in the state capitol and we marched up to the, uh, on 15th Avenue to the park that's up there. I can't think of the name of it right off. But anyway, I think about these uh, football, when they have these uh, bands and whatnot in the street, what do they call it? Parades. Mm -hmm. The Rose Bowl parade, the different parades, and everybody getting it, lift, making all this noise. God made it so plain and simple to me. He said, if, he said, if I be lifted up, he said, I'll draw all men. The Crips, the Bloods, the Democrats, the Republicans, the Baptists, the Methodists, he'll draw all of them and we'll come out of these four walls and go out there in the street with the praise and worship team. We got these praise and worship teams in these churches and we can get them out of these four walls and get them in the streets. Like to do these parades. Mm -hmm. Lifting up the name of Jesus. Yeah. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, he said, I what? He said, I draw all men unto me. So there's a simplicity that God shows me, but it's hard to get people to come out of the what? The four walls. I think about what Jesus did. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 through 38, Jesus walked through the villages. Now, this is God's son. He didn't have no chair with a stallion pulling it. He was walking. Mm -hmm. He walked through the villages and the cities doing what? Preaching and teaching of the kingdom, of the gospel of God. And doing what? Healing what? All sickness and all diseases. Mm -hmm. And what did he say? He said, the harvest is plentiful. But the what? But the laborers are few. So I need people to join in with us and pray for the laborers, the hidden, the highways, and the byways. The main thing that God showed me a long time ago when I first read Ezekiel chapter 37, the valley of the dry bones. And when I came here, and he said it's very dry heat. I'm not used to this, you, this dry heat. I'm used to the humidity. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I see Phoenix, Arizona. It's very hot here. It's very dry here. And it's like God had that conversation with Ezekiel. What did he say? He asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? He said, thou knowest, Lord. That's right. And what did God tell Ezekiel to do? Go and prophesy mm -hmm. to those bones. And they begin to come together. They begin to move the muscles, the bones. Everything started coming together. So I'm believing God, like he said in the last day, that who's going to pour his spirit upon what? All flesh. He said, your sons and daughters are going to prophesy. My son, and what they call it, my oldest son, he's prophesying right now. Speaking in tongues, everything. I thank God one day he got to see me casting devils out in the neighborhoods. Mm hmm Yes, this is what I'm looking for, the people who are really sold out to him. I found some football players and basketball players who would listen. It wasn't easy, but I at least trained them up for at least three to four years. So I'm looking for some men like Daniel did in Daniel chapter 1. If we can find some men and women who want to fast and pray for three years, at least three years. What were, I mean, what happened to Daniel and them and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? After three years, they went before the king. Guess what? They were ten times better than the one that went to the Ivory League, the one that went to ASU, or USC, or the University of Georgia, or Georgia Tech, whatever, God, they were 10 times better because they made up in their mind to do what? To fast and pray. First, they did a 10 day test. They said all we needed is some what? Some pulse, which means some mushroom foods, some fruit, nuts, and water. Take away the king's meat, take away the king's wine. I want you to prove something here. See how fair and flesh we gonna look. The ones eating the king's meat and drinking the king's wine. The eunuch seen it, he said, oh, we changing everybody died. But they did it for three years. And when they went before the king, they was what? 10 times better in wisdom, interpreting dreams and visions, doing great signs and wonders. God do the same thing today. We just gotta get in shape. And God showed me a long time ago, the only we won in football not that we were the smartest coaches, we made them, we pushed them hard. Mm -hmm. And we played hard. We made our player give it all you got on the field. And if you gave it all you got, 
we played against a better team. It was better than we. Yeah. So that's it. And that's how we chalking it up now. So we got the devil worship us fashion and praying. When we going to fashion pray? I'm talking about the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Most pastors overweight with big guts. They don't want to fashion pray. They're not going to tell the church to fashion pray. They ain't doing it. So let's us rise up as the body of Christ and let us come together in unity. And let's focus on the apostles' doctrine. The only doctrine I see in the Bible that Jesus taught the apostles was the apostles' doctrine. Now, I know the Pharisees and Sadducees had their own doctrine, the reason why they couldn't come together. The Pharisees and Sadducees nowadays is what's calling this division. If we can come together and agree with what the Word says, God said, Apostle Peter made it plain. He said, God, I mean, Apostle Paul, he said, God set the church up, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, then helps. You know what helps stand for, H-E-L-P-S? Having enough loving people serving. Hmm. Then government, then tongues. Is everybody in the body of Christ an apostle? No. Is everybody a prophet? No. Is everybody a pastor? No. These professional teams, basketball and football, no matter what team, they're looking for certain positions so they can win. The body of Christ will be doing the same thing. I don't care what denomination. My belief is that they all rise up and begin to do the five-fold ministry. God had me to put a five-fold church act together. And I sent it down to the state capitol. Hmm. The young man that was in the House of Representatives. Can't think of his name right now. But anyway, we are moving forward. And I'm believing God for miraculous things. God showed me when we were going to win the state when I was coaching football. Hmm. I looked at it the first time. The reason we lost when we made it to the state in football I, my whole team and then the coaches, all of us, we were just glad to be there because we wanted to go to the state. We didn't say we wanted to win it. So once we've been there from then on, I'm changing my mind. I said, no, nah, we're not going to the state. we win winning the state. And each time we spoke that thing, guess what? We won it. Only time we lost because the head coach was playing politics. He didn't run the plays that I would call him. Anytime we won, he ran the plays I told him to run, it was touchdowns. And I can see it just like playing chess. A plan check strategies. So we need strategies. I'm looking for men and women of God who have humbled themselves and really ready to work together for the betterment of this society, for the betterment of this culture. And the main thing is, I want to train up spiritual men and women to reign and rule over these seven mountains of culture, over the government. We need spiritual men and women over the government. We need spiritual men and women reigning and ruling over churches and religions. We need spiritual men and women reigning and ruling over businesses. We need spiritual men and women reigning over the education system. We need spiritual men reigning and ruling over the arts and science. We need spiritual men and women preaching and teaching the gospel on the social media. Not spreading gossip, but spreading the gospel. Mm -hmm. The gospel is God offers sinful people eternal life. Hmm. And I just thank God for the opportunity to be here. I didn't know when I was coming for the interview. I told Clovis I was coming. <laughs> and I'm here. And I thank God for you, man of God, because I know we've met once before. Mm -hmm. And what God showed me for the body of Christ, B-I-B-L-E, you know, I go out evangelizing all the time and I'm asking people, you know what the Bible stands for? They give me this religious answer. Basic instruction before leaving earth. That's just a religious cliche. I said, but well, guess what God showed me? Basic instruction before loving everyone. Mm. John 3.16, back up what I'm talking about. And I think about the Pharisees and Sadducees when they came at Jesus, who is the greatest of the commandments of the law. What did he tell them? Matthew 22, 34 through 40. The greatest commandment is to what? Is to love who? To love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. So that's what we are today. It's all about love. Guess what love means? Living obediently, victoriously, eternally. And I want y'all to be able to put the Holy Bible together. The H in holy stand for he, meaning God. The O stand for only. The L stand for left. And the Y stand for you. Now you can put the Holy Bible together. He only left you basic instruction before loving everyone. But a lot of people go on the church and nobody want to read the Bible. You can't be on my team and reading the playbook. Hmm. You're sitting on the bench. So that maybe that's why we got a lot of people go to church and they sit on the bench, sit on the pew. We need them on the battlefield. Mm, that's right. But I do thank God for the boys that are in the house doing the work. But we need boys in the house doing the work, and we need some boys out on the field doing the work. I love the fans. I only read in that place, but because of the fans, football and basketball. I would have played baseball, but only a few parents came. Mm. So we have a great cloud of witness that is going on before us. And we need to be giving God honor and glory, whatever we're doing down here on the battlefield. They are watching us right now. They are cheering us on. 
And I thank God for this interview and this opportunity. Well, thank you guys so much for even stopping by here, man. I mean, there's some good information and some good encouragement that I needed to hear, you know, myself. So if, if people needed to reach you, contact you, connect with you, build with you, grow with you, be with you, walk with you, talk with you, however it needs to happen, man, how can they do that? What's the best way to contact you guys? Go ahead. The well, best way to reach me is my Facebook page is Gregory Baskin. If you type in that, send me a friend request. Um, you can messenger me also and then um, the other way is by um, our, G, our email is G N O M I the number four life at AOL.com and our church number is 623-313-1961 and uh, you can reach us there so I'm looking for men and women that's willing to pray I have another um, uh, thing, it's called uh, God's SWAT Team, so uh, it's talking about intercessory prayer, and if you want to know how to evangelize more, we'll teach free lessons uh, to give out free information and, 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 and that you could go out and we can minister to people. So that's the best way to reach me, 24-7, uh, you can reach us, and um, let's do this thing. In Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Okay. The best way to reach me, the name of my church is Angels of Jerusalem Church. I'm located at 11242 North 19th Avenue, Suite 21. I meet up there every first, second, and fourth Sunday from 10 to 1230. I'm looking for men and women who want to come and understand what the five-fold ministry is all about. I'm not teaching any religious doctrines. I'm teaching the apostles, doctrine, what's in the scriptures. Anything I'm teaching you, I want to show you in the scriptures. So I found some young men who want to play football and basketball. I'm looking for some young men and women who are serious about doing God's church. And uh, every third Sunday, I go down to St. Vincent de Paul, 1075. West Jackson Street. There's a basketball court on the back side of St. Vincent de Paul. And the name of the basketball court is Mel Lock Lemons. Anyway, I got access to use the chapel and the preach out there. Got to be out of there around about, 20, uh, about 12, 30 or so. So we've been out there for two hours and a half. And I have some young men. One young man by the name of Noah Warrior, Hispanic brother. And another young man by the name of uh, Pierre Corley and his wife, Chantel Corley. They come down faithfully, and they be excited. They remind me of my football and basketball related. We got to get some vendors and what they're doing. And I told them, because one of my first prophecies back in 1995 and 96, when God had called me into the ministry, uh, they was prophesying about it. everywhere I go, they're going to put some demons before me. I got to cast them out. And God has been doing that. And I believe, so I'm looking for believers. Yes. And uh, that's why I was glad they, for God to allow me to do this in my older summers. They see me catching. He didn't know what was going on. A lot of people been going to church for years. They never seen nobody catch devils out. Mm. So that's what we all about. So I'm looking for some mature men who want to be able to lay hands and heal the sick. Like I said, my main verse is Mark 16, 17. It said, these signs are father them that believe. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues, not speaking tongues. That old lying tongue, that old backbiting tongue, that old murmuring, complaining tongue, that old profanity tongue. Yeah, God will clean up that tongue. There's three different tongues in the Bible. It's a new tongue. It's other tongues in Acts chapter 2. And it's in tongue in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. The new tongue is right there in Mark 16, 17. But the main thing I love about it, he said they should take up serpents. They say if they drink any debt, they think it shouldn't hurt them. But the main thing I love, they should lay hands and heal the sick. These are the signs that follow disciples. So I'm looking for true disciples today. And God already showed me the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. I'm looking for a few men who are serious about God's church. And I said before, the meaning of church, I thank God for these acronyms. Guess what church stands for? Christians, humbly united, reaching children, honestly. And I need y'all to pray for me that I finish this book. I got this book that I'm writing, comparing sports, mainly basketball, to church. The title of the book, Church is a Five-Fold Team Sport. Team stand for together, everyone achieve more. I just told you what church stand for. Five-fold is about a little different five offices. 
apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And when God blew me away, church is a five-fold team sport. When God gave me the definition of what sports stand for, I said, God, you're awesome with these uh, acronyms. <laughs> sport, S-P-O-R-T. Spiritual people, or you can say spiritual preachers, obediently restoring truth. A lot of lies been told by religious leaders. Hmm. I thank God for Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 8 through 16, what Jesus did when he ascended. Most people don't believe in them, the apostles. Now, the apostles are the lamb of the 12 apostles that walked with Jesus. But there are some ascension apostles. Apostle Paul was an ascension apostle. He didn't walk with Jesus. Mm -hmm. But he wrote a lot of scriptures in the New Testament. And I love Ephesians 4, 8. He said, Jesus ascended on high and he led captivity captive. And we're going to skip down to verse 11, Ephesians 4, 11. And he gave some apostles. Mm -hmm. Same thing God did in the uh, first Corinthians 12, 28. He gave some apostles, but he gave all five of them right here. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. Why did he do it? For the perfecting of the saints. I told y'all I perfected two state championships. I want to perfect some saints today. Mm. Yeah. For the work of the ministry. A lot of pastors complain because they ain't got the church structure according to the scriptures. They do not call it their religion. Mm. Following the traditions of the elder, most of the commandments of God. Yes. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen. Five pastors in these different denominations. I don't care what denomination is. I've been to a lot of them, and all of them got five pastors. They got the senior pastor, assistant pastor, the youth pastor, the college pastor, the internet. Everybody's a pastor. <laughs> I want to be able to come to your church and say, I, I want to go to the office where the apostle is. I want to go to the office where the evangelist is. I want to go to the office. I want to talk to the prophet. Do we have an office here? That's what the church will be structured, and that's my belief. Amen. And I'm looking for like-minded men and women who want to do this. And that's one reason together we're working together. And I thank God for Kingdom of God, Apostolic Prophetic Ministry, Apostle Micah Paul Sterling. He's the only pastor, uh, apostle that I ran into, got his church structured, it's fivefold. Hmm. He have a college there. I got my uh, doctorate, no, no, I got my master's degree there. I was working on my doctorate, but God told me it's time to go. I've been there for about three or four years, he said, time to go. I need you to go start, break up, and do what I call you to do. So that's why I'm here today. So I thank God for teaching me how to lay hands and heal the sick, and to cast out devils, even raise the dead. God used me to raise my mother from the dead. And the first time God did it to me, scared me. One of my friends in Atlanta, I called her, talked to her mom. She said, you know my baby daughter did. I said, okay. I used to fast and pray religiously, three days. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I'm fasting and praying. I ain't eating nothing, I ain't drinking nothing. And I went over there to visit during the funeral. I'm walking down the line to go view the body. As I'm in the line, the Lord spoke loud and clear. I want you to lay hands and raise her from the dead. I said, God, if I do that, pandemonium is going to bring up. People going to be running, running out the building. I said, God, I didn't do that. So I got so fearful. I got out of line and went and sit down. I didn't go nowhere near that casket. Mm. We drive to the funeral. I mean, we dive to the, uh, uh, the grave site. They trying to take the casket off the bracket and some kind of way it's clipped and it cracked. God said, I need you to go lay hands on that casket and raise it from the dead. I said, God, if, if I do that, God, Panama going to break up. They're going to be in their cars, all kind of wreck. They're going to have my here on I-20. I said, God, I said, I know what I do, God. They got to take the body back. In Georgia, they got a law. You can't put a cracked casket in the ground. Mm -hmm. I said, they're going to take her back to the funeral home to fix the casket before they put it in the ground. I said, I'm going to go there and lay hands and raise her there. God wanted it done what? Before the people. God didn't bring it back to my teaching to two years later. I had to ask God to forgive me for not laying hands on that question, raising that woman from the dead. There's nothing you can't do when you put your mind and set up to him. Mm -hmm. God, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Mm -hmm. So we got to stop playing church and rise up and walk in the fullness of what he's calling us to do. And all he takes is what? Surrender. Mm -hmm. Submit unto his will. And I thank God for your man of God for this interview. Well, yeah. thank you guys so much for this time, and thank you so much for your testimony, and just thank you so much for your passion. I'm encouraged, and I know the people that are listening will be encouraged. Um, I know that that you know even your voice is raining out to the city now, and people are starting to be encouraged because of the Spirit and the Holy Ghost that's dwelling inside your heart. So I'm definitely humbled and. Uh, Man, definitely, definitely look forward to hearing about and seeing the things that you guys are doing. Amen.
Can we close out in prayer right quick? Jump yeah. ahead, my brother. Let's close out in prayer. You go ahead and pray, man of God. Father, we just thank you right now. Those that are watching on every multimedia platform, we speak over them right now, God. Yes, you Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord. That, God, that you would draw from the north, south, east, and west, God. That, God, that you would let there be an open heaven over uh, Arizona, yes, God. Lord. Yes, over Lord. Over Maricopa County, God. Lord, where your spirit will be poured out throughout this state, God. All over this, this county, Lord. Yes, Lord. In yes, every Lord. hospital, in every home, in every school, every courthouse, God. Lord, we're asking you right now to move right now in the midst of your people, God. In every neighborhood, God, God, that people will wake up and begin to call on your name, Lord. You said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. In other words, that word also means they shall be rescued. And God, our people, oh God, are in trouble all over this place, God. And Lord God, we're asking you to rescue today, oh God. Yes, Lord. We're asking you to set free, God. Right now. Mentally, spiritually. In the name of Jesus. Financially, God. Yes, God, Lord. We're asking for you to move in a Move, mighty Lord. Way, God. Move, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the homes, God. In the homes, God, upon our children, God. Yes, Lord. Lord God, we pray in Jesus' name that God, that you would protect our children. Yes, Lord. From the sex trafficking. God. In the name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus, from human trafficking. Yes, God. Lord. In the name of Jesus, from every drug and alcohol. Fred, no. The yes, enemy Lord. Is trying to place in their life. Yes, Lord. Trying to give them some peace and some joy, which is fake. And God, we're asking you right now to do it right now, God. We thank you for it, God. And Lord God, we just pray for all the youth pastors, God. Yes, Lord. Youth yes, ministers, Lord. God. Yes, Lord. I yes, pray, Lord. God, that right a now. fresh anointing fall fresh upon them, God. Oh, God, that they begin to seek your face, God. They begin to walk after you, God. Being led of you, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Let there be a revival. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Of souls of yes, young Lord. people, yes, God. Lord. Raise them up, God. Raise them up right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Give us children, young people, God, that are hungry and thirst after your righteousness, God, and that will seek your face as never before, God. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Thank right you, now. Lord. We thank you, Lord, for opening up their eyes. We thank you for opening up their ears. We thank you right now, God, for giving them clarity, God, and giving them a relationship with you that is, that is God, beyond their, their, their greatest thoughts, God, that they could think of, yes, of having with you, God. We're asking you to do it right now. Do it, Lord. Do it right now in the name of Jesus. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And Lord, only get in contact with me. Thank you, Lord. Email ApostleKingHarry at Yahoo.com. On yes. Facebook, just look up Harry King. Look for my logo. It's like a state capitol or look might be, might, might, might be the White House. Yes, look for my logo in the name of Jesus, Angels of Jerusalem. And the way to contact me, if you want to be a blessing, like I said, I love fans and I love the players. A lot of the fans is the one who want to support what's going on on the field. So if you want to contact me and be a blessing to Angels of Jerusalem as well as the National Believer Association, my cash app is the dollar sign Apostle King Harry. And my phone number it's 480-246-4746. I love you all. Be praying for us as we praying for you. That we turn this thing around. I know God used Apostle Paul and then they turn this world upside down. I want God to use us to turn this world right side up. So we're praying for this country and this nation and this world. Y'all have a blessed day going down everybody it's your boy Darnell and I want to thank you so much for coming on here and watching the interview if you can please subscribe to our YouTube channel at Arizona Informant TV where you will get all the latest content all the updated information and all the latest news so again please subscribe to the channel and we will see you soon